I think the first thing that you should think about is who's the audience for the film. How that audience gets information and then how that audience consumes media. So there could be organizations, there can be social media, Facebook groups, um, there can be a Twitter community, you know, or maybe not, maybe it's like an old school organization that just communicates to people through listservs. But you have to find out like how these people communicate with one another, and then you have to engage yourself in that communication. So one of the things that oh, I here, do hang I on. start working on a project is we identify the audience, um, and drill down to exact characteristics that we're trying to attract. And usually that's not going to be more than three, but usually two types of audience that we're trying to attract. And we find where they are populated online. So we go to blogs, we go to online publications, we go to chat rooms and forums and um, online radio, and we connect with the people who run those sites. Um, because you want to find some champions early on. You want to find influencers because those people already have an audience that you want to get in touch with. So if you can gain their trust and their interest in your project, then they will help you reach the outer circles of their, um, of their viewership or their listening um, audience. It has to be a two-way street though. You're not being disingenuous by contacting them and using them. They have a reputation to protect, and they're very mindful of that, so you can't do anything that would expose them. People like that are very mindful about who they're going to champion. So you have to remember that when you're contacting them and keeping them in the loop, that you genuinely want to talk with them and genuinely want to be friends with them so that they can trust you. and and work with you. You're going to use this as well to, to build up your personal brand as well as your film brand. And I would encourage everyone in this room to start building their <coughs> personal brand immediately. So you're going to have a blog. You're going to have a website slash blog. You're going to talk about your experiences as a filmmaker, as a professional person working in the industry. Everybody here must have stories about things that they've done in the past, problems that they had, how they overcame it. Um, resources that they use to do it. All that information is stuff that people want to know and hear from you. And it makes you an expert in the field, somebody to listen to. And you'll take that as well when you're using things like Facebook and Twitter. You're going to position yourself not as I'm having coffee and driving around town, but you're going to provide resources that you use that you think your audience would appreciate. It shouldn't all be a conversation of just you and your film and your trailer and what festival you're going to and all you, 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 you. You should post news that has to do with the interests of your audience. So the community that I'm in on Facebook has to do with independent filmmakers. And whenever I post things, it's usually links to articles or blogs that I've read today that would be of benefit to them. And there are times when you will be promoting your film, but it shouldn't be all the time. I heard some kind of statistic where it was, for every 10 tweets that you do, you can do one that's self-promotion. <laughs> and the rest of them have to do with connecting with your audience, participating in the community that you're in. You should have Google alerts set for your name, for your project name, for a topic that has to do with your film so that you can keep up with whatever people are talking about. And if they're talking about you or they're talking about your film, you want to talk to them. You want to go to their blogs and you want to leave comments about what they've asked or um, to give them more information, to thank them for talking about you know, the film and if you're going to be screening it somewhere soon, to tell them that, um, to tell them that you like their review or what they said so much that you're putting it on your Facebook page and it helps to take them and their traffic over if they didn't know that you had one um, to see what else that you post there. So it's all about making two-way connections, making a dialogue. It's not about using social media as an advertising tool. Before filmmakers thought, oh, I just make the film. So, but actually, no. When you make the film, you're half done. Filmmaking is 50% of the process. The other 50% of the process is connecting that film to an audience. If you have $100,000 to make a film, you're way better off making your film for $50,000 and saving $50,000 for distribution and marketing. As a filmmaker, I was thinking, well, this is really tough. I even hate doing this. So then I thought, oh, well, why don't we create a crew position to handle distribution and marketing? And so I created this crew category of the producer of marketing and distribution, or the PMD. Even before you have a DP and an editor, this person should be on board just as much as an AD needs to be there, a DP needs to be there, an editor, 
you know, and I've, you know, fire your editor. If you have little money, don't have enough money, don't hire an editor, hire this person. Edit your own film, this person's more, and then get a lot of feedback or hire someone to finish your editing or something like that. But you need to hire this person as much as those other categories. It's that important now. He was talking about the 50-50 thing, but incorporating the marketing money and the uh, more P&A money into the... Uh, into the into the project from the get-go and I think it's really smart and it has to be that has to actually be done now uh, if you're even using traditional financing models to make your movie uh, everybody knows in this room if you've actually made a feature film that P&A funds are the first to exit in first position before the person who actually funded the movie and that's fundamentally been a flaw in the system for the last 50 years where somebody who puts all the money into a project is exiting a position from the investment side after the marketing company who's actually had a chance to see a finished film puts their money in and recoups first that and is usually at a higher rate at a higher rate it's fundamentally flawed uh, so if there is a way to struct you know when people are writing their business plans for their films it's a good idea to inc when you're doing a traditional raise that p a money should be built into the business plan and you should be asking one group to provide that money. So don't go out and ask some third party P&A group and you'll see them all over LinkedIn and all over the web. You know, oh, I'll provide P&A money. Oh, whatever, I don't need you for that. I mean, really what you want is one funding group to provide you production and marketing money. And the other thing is by raising P&A money later, you're kind of recognizing the whole thought process into that is like, well, I'm going to do it thinking that I don't need to raise the P&A money because I'm going to sell my film to a distributor. They're going to pay me, and then I don't need to raise it because the distributor is going to do it. Okay, so that's flaw delusion number one. <laughs> and then problem number one is that then you're doing it too late, is that you're raising the marketing money after you finish the film and you've basically shot yourself in the foot because these days in order to build an audience for the film you need to start at inception and you need to be integrating it organically into the process of making the film and frankly that will also make the process of marketing much more fun and creative and there's many new creative ways to create larger more robust projects that then have many more avenues of promotion and distribution than just a feature film. You know, it, not only do you, not only do filmmakers have to get out of the mindset of, okay, I make my film, then I distribute it. That's an old mindset that has to go away very quickly. Filmmakers also have to get out of the mindset that I only make shorts and features and maybe TV, like in they're each in these little boxes. You have to start thinking that you're a story creator and that your story can live in many forms, whether it be a feature film, graphic novel, web series, you know, video game, etc. And the studios have been doing this forever, and they're actually pretty good at it but the independent world is lagging very, very far behind. On a Canadian side as well, I'd just like to add that I'm actually acting as a bit of a lobbyist to try and change some of these rules out of the telefilm office in Vancouver. You probably wouldn't be able to do the P&A deal integrated in with the production budget if you were to work with telefilm. You know, that's not the way they work.